morning. morning. I'd like to welcome everyone out this morning, uh, especially if we have any visitors. We just hope that you feel right at home and just worship the way the Lord leads you this morning. So if you uh, picked up a bulletin on your way in, just a few things on there this morning. Uh, we'll be having Thanksgiving dinner today right after this morning's service, so hopefully everyone will stay and participate in that and feed your face a little. Uh, the Christmas shoe boxes are due today. Is there anything that needs to be mentioned on that? or? Okay. All right, and uh, the Lord's Supper will be observed on Sunday, November the 21st. And Wednesday night services will be canceled on November the 24th. So the season of prayer for international missions and Lottie Moon Christmas offering will be November 28th through December the 5th. So be in prayer about that. And food baskets. You can see the list of what's needed for the food baskets. If, uh, if you put someone's name down, a family in need uh, of a basket on the list, just know that you're the one that be responsible for taking the basket to them. Is there anything that needs to be else on that? Okay. All right. And then at the bottom, you'll see the, the sixth of the 18 articles of faith that as uh, Baptists, what we believe in there. So is there any announcements that need to be mentioned that were not listed in the bulletin this morning? Don't forget to sign up for the drive-through nativity if you haven't done so. Sign up for St. Louis in the vestibule. And even if you signed up last year, go ahead and sign up again. And we want to make sure we've not missed anything. Okay. So it's that time. I guess practice will start soon on that. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. Do we have any prayer requests this morning that's not listed in the bulletin? unspoken requests this celebrated a birthday this past week. There we go. and prayers for the past of my brother. It was uh, having a church family was such a blessing. And thank you. Let's sing the Red Book song. Let my life be a life. 
good morning, everybody. And it's certainly good to be here today, and I, I have enjoyed all the songs uh, that have been sung here this morning, and I do appreciate everyone. And uh, it's been good just to be here to worship the Lord, isn't it? And uh, to enjoy the good Holy Spirit and the presence of God, and I'm so thankful uh, that through the grace of God we can uh, have that, and we can experience that, and we can worship Him today. Uh, in the freedom, freedom of the Spirit of God through salvation and the death on the cross of our Savior and the resurrection. And I'm so thankful for, for God's grace, His mercy, and His blessings this morning. Uh, before we uh, get into the Scripture uh, today, I uh, want to take just a few minutes. And um, over the last several weeks and months, uh, we have uh, been sharing and praying and uh, working towards getting... Uh, the the shoebox is ready for Operation Christmas Child, and uh, I know that uh, everybody has had a part. Uh, everybody's been praying. Everybody has gathered, and they've uh, went. They've bought. They purchased things to be able to put in each and every one of these shoeboxes that you see that's up front here this morning. And today is the day that uh, the deadline to turn those in. Uh, Karen and uh, a few of the other ladies are going to be taking those down to Milan. Uh, church tomorrow and that is where they're going to get, get those together they'll send them off and then they'll go uh, throughout the world uh, to children and uh, I want to take just a few minutes and I want us all we want to have a special time of prayer uh, for these shoe boxes this morning and I want to ask everybody that would uh, that can if you can this morning if you get up come let's gather here in this altar this morning and let's have a special time of prayer just for these shoe boxes. And uh, if you would at this time, come on and let's gather together. And uh, while you're making your way down, uh, just a couple things to, to pray for this morning is this. Let's pray number one uh, for these boxes. Uh, that each shoe box that we have not only here, uh, but it, that have been gathered together in churches all across the United States of America and that they go, that each one of these boxes get into the hands of the child that God would have them to get into. And I believe with all my heart, we serve a big God this morning, don't we? We serve a God that's able to take each and every one of these shoe boxes. This shoe, these shoe boxes can go to each child. Uh, God has a specific child in mind, and I believe that he will get that certain box in the hands of that child. Amen? And pray that God would take that shoebox and the items that are in it. And uh, also, not only that, but each one of those will come with a story of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that the gospel of Jesus would be shared with each one of these children that received the box. And that they would have the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Pray for this this morning. And we've heard uh, a lot of testimonies. We've heard a lot of stories just over the last several months of just uh, the simplest of gifts from a bar of soap to a stuffed animal to school supplies. Whatever it is, God can take the simplest thing that you have placed in those shoe boxes and He can use it for your glory, His honor, His kingdom, that people would be saved. They would come to know Him as their Savior. God can use it in a mighty way. Amen? And it'd be all for Him. And I pray this morning that God would bless and use each and every one of these boxes. Amen? So let's pray today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. God, we are so thankful, Father, for just the privilege and the opportunity that, Lord, you have given us over the last several months, Lord, to be able to buy, to be able to purchase, Lord, to be able to put these boxes together. God, we thank you for every item that has been bought. We thank you for every item that, Lord, has went into each and every one of these boxes. And, Lord, our prayer is that, God, you would bless every item. God, bless every box that, Lord, is here this morning. And, Father, my prayer is and our prayer is that, Lord, you would just take them and use them for your glory, your honor, and kingdom. 
God, I pray that, Lord, through these boxes that, God, you would give an opportunity, an invitation, an opportunity for someone to call on your name, Lord, and be saved. That, God, they would believe on you with all their heart. That they would accept the free gift of salvation. And, Lord, believe that you died for them on the cross of Calvary. And that on the third and glorious day, you arose victoriously over the grave in their sin. God, I pray this morning that, Father, that each one of these boxes, that, Lord, they would go to the children that you would have them go to. Lord, I pray that, Lord, each box would, Lord, end up in the hands of that specific child that, Lord, you want to have that box. Lord, you know every child's need. You know every child's heart. You know every home that, Lord, these children will represent. And I pray that, Father, you would use these boxes mildly for your honor. God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. And, Lord, we pray that, God, you you would go before these boxes and, Lord, place them exactly where you want them to be. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you this morning. As you're making your way back to your seats, uh, we encourage you today that if you would uh, to turn with us in your Bibles and uh, follow along, read with us today. We're going to be in the book of Acts, chapter 21. Uh, But not only are we going to be in the book of Acts chapter 21, but we're going to be looking at several other scriptures today. So uh, we're going to have that on the screen available for you. And uh, we encourage you to follow along with us on the screen or in your uh, Bibles this morning. Pray for us today uh, that we'll try to share just what God has given us, what He's laid on our heart, and uh, the message that God uh, would have for us. We have got a a special time uh, that we're coming up on, aren't we? Uh, Thanksgiving and uh, we've all here this morning got so much to be thankful for God has blessed us in so many ways and uh, we ought to just be thankful and give God that thanks that glory that honor that praise that he's so worthy of today Uh, and we this is a wonderful time uh, that we're fixing to celebrate and we encourage everybody that can and will uh, to stay with us for just a few minutes here after uh, service this time of fellowship and our Thanksgiving dinner and we can give thanks to the Lord for all that he's done for us but for a few minutes we ask for your prayers and uh, that you'd follow along with us Acts chapter 21 verse number 1 and uh, the Bible says this and it came to pass that after we were gotten from them and had launched We came with a straight course unto Coos, and the day following unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Patara. And finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, we went aboard and set forth. Now when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syrah and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unlaid her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. And when he had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way, and they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city. And we kneeled down on the shore and prayed, and when we had taken our leave one of another, we took ship, and they returned home again." And when they had finished our course from Tyre, we came to, I can't say the word this morning, but anyway, and saluted the brethren and abode with them one day. And the next day we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when, we ha- and when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that uh, place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not 
to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of our Lord Jesus. And we, and when he would not be persuaded, we see saying they, that the will of the Lord be done. And that's all we'd like to read this morning. Uh, as we look here at uh, the, the chapter 21, uh, the book of Acts, we're going to find, as the Bible said, as Paul, uh, they had, uh, as it come to pass, that they had uh, gotten from them, they had launched out, and uh, the Bible said that they had entered into uh, Coos, and the day falling under roads, and from thence, uh, Petar, they, they said, the finding the ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, said they went abroad and set forth. Now, when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed unto Syria and landed at Tyre, for the ship was to unlaid her burden. Uh, we find here that the ship that Paul uh, was sailing on, when they had reached there to Syri and landed in Tyre, uh, the Bible said that the ship was ready to unlaid, or the word unload is what that means, uh, and unload her burden there at Tyre. Uh, what an example, as I began to read about this, the Lord reminded me of how this ship uh, can serve as an example for you and I. You say, preacher, what do you mean by that? Well, the Bible said here, as Paul wrote there in the Acts there, uh, what we read, this ship was ready to unload. It was ready to get rid of the burden or the weight or the load that it was bearing, that it was carrying. And uh, I'm reminded this morning uh, that the Bible teaches you and I uh, that for us, that of us that have had burdens or weight or whatever we're loaded down with, we have somebody that we can take those loads to, don't we? We have a place that we can lay our burdens. We have someone, my friend, that we can take them to. And I'm glad this morning that we do because you and I that are sitting here this morning, uh, each and every one of us at certain days or certain times throughout our life, we are going to be burdened down, aren't we? We're going to have a weight. We're going to have the weight of the world upon us. We're going to face burdens. We're going to have struggles. We're going to have loads uh, that we're going to bear. And I'm glad to know this morning that even though we have those burdens and those weights and those loads that we have, we have somebody that we, will help us through. We have a place that we can take them and lay them this morning. We're going to look at that through the scripture if you'll turn with me to the book of first peter this morning first peter and we're going to look at first peter chapter number five first peter chapter five the the bible says here in first peter chapter five peter began to write and he said this he said uh, he said casting all your care upon him for he careth for you now, when you go back to verse number 6, Peter said this. He said, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. And he said that he may exalt you in due time. Listen, you and I that have been saved by the grace of God, Peter reminded us something. We ought to come before the Lord humbly, aren't we? We need to be humble before the Lord. And we ought to come humbly before God, as he said. He said, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, he said, cast all your care upon him. Peter reminded you and I, as he reminded in his letter, church, we can cast all all of our cares upon the Lord today. Amen? Whatever your burden is, whatever your load is, whatever your weight is, whatever it is that you are carrying around day in and day out, my friend, cast that weight. Cast your care upon the Lord this morning. Why? Why should we cast our cares upon Him? Peter reminded us of something. He said this, For He careth for you. Aren't you glad of that this morning? Man, we've got a Savior today that loves you and I. We've got a Savior today that cares for you and I. 
He cares so much for us that He does not want you or I to carry our cares around with us. He doesn't want us to be burdened down with the cares of this life. He doesn't want us to be weighted down. He doesn't want us to be loaded down with the cares of the life. But cast our cares upon Him. My friend, whatever that care is, that burden, that weight, that whatever it is, it can be anything. Do you know that? It could be bad news from the doctors. It could be financial troubles in your life. It could be your children that are lost and have been never been saved by the grace of God. It could be your children or grandchildren that my friend have strayed away and that have got out of the will and the way of God and they've got away from the church and, and they're no longer serving and they're worshiping or living for God. My friend, it may be the cares of this life. It may be the burdens that you may have or face at work or, or just the people that you work around or live around. My friend, whatever that case care or weight or whatever it is my friend cast it upon the Lord this morning because he cares for you I like that song that they sang that you know when we go through the fire when we go through the fire and trials of this life we've got somebody that'll go through the fire with us and his name is Jesus and Jesus my friend says cast your cares upon me cast your cares upon him why because he cares for you he cares so much for you this morning he does not want you or I to walk around burdened or weighted down or loaded down with the cares of this life another verse I want to look at if you will turn to Matthew this morning the gospel of Matthew chapter 11 Matthew chapter 11 uh, we're going to look at verse number 28 and through 30 today Matthew chapter 11 Verses number 28 through 30. And the Lord Jesus Christ, this is very familiar, this scripture is. And when you look at Matthew chapter 11, uh, we're going to find here it kind of starts out as John had sent out his disciples to Christ. And they asked the Lord, they said, are you really the Christ or should we look for another? And we know that, that the Lord sent word back to John and said, I am the one, I am the Messiah. And he told him, he said all these things, but he got down to verse number 28. And here's what the Lord says. And here's what he's telling you and telling me this morning. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Man, is that not encouraging this morning? Is that not uh, comforting to know? He's saying, come unto me. The Lord Jesus is standing this morning with open arms. He has an invitation that he's extending to you and I today. And he's saying, listen, come to me. If you're weighted down with the cares of this life, if you're loaded up with the worry and doubt and fear and concern and anxiety and you're worried about the sickness and the things, the, the bad news or the circumstance or whatever it may be, come. Come unto me. He said, I will give you rest. Aren't you glad of that this morning? My friend, listen, the Lord doesn't want us to carry these things around. He don't want us, my friend, to struggle with them. But He wants us to bring them before Him and lay them at His feet and say, Lord, I'm bringing these to you. I'm going to lay them at the foot of the cross. God, I'm trusting you and putting my faith in you that you're going to take care and you're going to make a way and you're going to give me the rest and the peace that I need to get through. God provides rest this morning from our burdens, from our labors. And he said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Verse 29 says this, take my yoke upon you. He said, and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart. For, and ye shall find rest unto your souls the Lord Jesus reminded them once again if you'll just come to me if you'll come to me and and take my yoke upon you and if you'll learn of me he said I'm meek I'm lowly he said I'll give you rest for your souls once again there is rest this morning in the Lord he said verse 30 he said for my yoke is easy and my burden is light I am so thankful this morning, church, we serve a God that's able to help us with our burdens, that's able to help us with our load, that's able to help us with whatever we have in this world we're going through. The Lord Jesus is there. 
And as Peter said, cast your care upon him, for he cares for you. Remember that. He cares for you. I thought about this many times. Man, what these verses, what they help me see is a picture of our Lord. You think about that. You think about those times in your life where you are so burdened down, where you're so weighted down, where you're loaded up with the cares of this life. But man, just think about our Savior that you know that He's standing there and He's watching you and I go through what we're weighted down with, what we're burdened with, the cares that we've got on us. And you know that He's just standing there and He's saying, Come to me. Just just bring them to me. I'll take care of them. I'll bear your burden. And I'll make sure I'll take these things that you can have rest, that you can have comfort, that you can have peace for your soul. Amen. I believe our Lord does that because I believe there's one thing. Not only does he care for us, but if you'll turn over to Matthew chapter 5, look what the Lord tells us here in Matthew chapter 5. This was the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew chapter 5, starting with verse number 14. I believe that our Lord, not only does He care for us, and He doesn't want us to be burdened and weighted down and, and, and care of all, all these things, uh, have all this stuff on us, but I believe there's one goal and there's one purpose in mind. Not only does He love us and care for us, that He doesn't want to see us burdened and weighted down, but He also has this for us to do. And it's this, verse number 14. Jesus reminded us and he reminded them on the Sermon on the Mount. He said this, ye are the light of the world. He said, a city set on the hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Remember that word bushel. What is a bushel? A bushel is a burden. A bushel is a weight. It is a type of measure. And Jesus is telling them there, he says, listen, ye are the light of the world. You and I today that have been saved by the grace of God, the church of the living God, us that have been born again believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the light of the world. Amen? We are the light of the world. And he said, a city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Church, we are to be that city that's set on a hill. We are to be that light shining bright into a lost and dying world. We are to be that light into the darkness. My friend, people ought to see something in you and I. They ought to see the light of the Lord shining in us. They ought to see a difference about us. They ought to see that, my friend, there's something great and wonderful about being a child of God. He said, a city set on a hill cannot be hid. He said, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. What is Jesus saying in today's terms? This is what he's saying. Are you going to take a candle? And you're, take, think about this. You're in a dark house, okay? You're in a dark house. We all know what it's like to be in a house or be in a room that it's completely pitch dark. There's no light at all that's shining in. And Jesus is saying, okay, you're taking this candle. You're going to light it. Are you going to cover up that light where there is no light in the house? No. He's saying don't take the light and put a bushel over it. Don't take it and put a burden over it. Don't let it be hidden or, or dimmed down. But he's saying here's what a man does. He takes the candle. He puts it on a candlestick. Why? He said that it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Amen? He's saying, don't let your light, my friend, be dimmed. Don't let your light be burdened down. Don't let your light be loaded down or, or have all these cares of the world, my friend, that'll bring dimness or cover up your light. He's saying, let your light shine before men. Amen? Let it shine out to all those that are in the house, that it gives light to all those that are therein. He went on to say, verse 16, He said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Jesus does not want us to carry these cares of life, these burdens, these weights, these loads around with us. Why? Because He loves us and cares for us. He wants to take them and bear them for us. 
because he wants us to have rest and peace for our souls. But he also wants us to continue to be about what he saved and called us to be. And that is a light into the darkness and a witness to a lost and dying world. Church, if there's anything this morning, I encourage you, don't let your light, my friend, be dimmed by the cares of this old world. Don't let your light grow dim of, of the burdens and the load and the weight that you're bearing around each and every day. But bring them before the Lord and ask God to help you with them and take care of them that you can be a light and a witness for Him in a lost and dying world. Jesus wants us to cast those cares upon Him. He wants us to come unto Him. He wants to give us rest for our soul. He loves us. He cares for us today. He wants us to shine a light for Him. I thought about going on in that scripture as we read here. The Apostle Paul, as we read, he got down there. He got to a man's name by the name of Philip. Now, we know a little bit about Philip, don't we, through the scripture. Changing gears just a little bit here. Philip, you say, who was he? Well, Philip was one of the seven deacons. He was one of the seven men in the first couple of chapters of the book of Acts that was set aside for the service of the widows. He was to serve the tables of the widows. He was there to serve. He was there to work and serve the Lord and to serve the widows there. But not only that, we know that Philip was, through the Bible teaches us throughout the book of Acts, Philip was an evangelist. He was one that loved to preach and to share and evangelize, spread the word of God. Not only that, but we know about Philip was, was that Philip was a God sent, he was a God called, God sent, spirit led man evangelist for the Lord. Not only that, but we know that after Stephen's death, Philip went and he preached there in Samaria. After Samaria, we know that he was led by the Spirit of God down to preach to the Ethiopian eunuch. And we know that he led that Ethiopian eunuch to the Lord. He baptized him there in that body of water. We know what kind of man that Philip was. He went preaching throughout the coast and until he got to Caesarea. We know that. We know that the Bible's told us this morning that Philip had godly daughters while they were there. We know that he had a godly home that Paul really enjoyed going to and spending time with. But the Bible said that while Paul was there in the home of Philip, while he was visiting there, the Bible said there was a prophet by the name of Agabus. And this man uh, come down to Paul and he said, here's what, he did something. He made a demonstration for Paul and all those that were there that were gathered around. And he took the very girdle of Paul. And the Bible said that he bound the hands and feet of Paul and what did he do? He told him, he said, listen, Paul. He said, here's what the Holy Ghost says. He said, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Man, he was telling Paul, he said, listen, Paul, you're on your way to Jerusalem. You're on your way down here. But there's some things that are going to happen when you get to Jerusalem. You're going to be bound. You're going to be imprisoned. Why? For the cause of of Jesus Christ and those the company the people that were around Paul that that loved him his friends that were so dear to him what did they say verse number 12 said and when they heard these things both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem those people did not want to see Paul go to Jerusalem and be bound why for the sufferings for the things that he was about to face the hardship that he was going to have to endure if he went down there. Why? Because they loved him. They loved him. He was a dear friend to them. These are people that followed Paul. They were supporters of the ministry of the gospel that he preached. They loved him. They did not want to see any harm come to the apostle Paul. But what did Paul tell them? Verse number 13. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. You're talking about a man that was selfless. Not only was he okay with going down to Jerusalem 
and being bound in chains and thrown in prison. But Paul was at the point that he told him, he said, Listen, not only am I ready to go be bound, but I am ready to die for the Lord Jesus Christ. Why was Paul so determined in his heart? Why was Paul, why would Paul say something like that? Because Paul realized something. He knew that all of these people that he was around, that they loved him dear and they were close to him and he loved them. But Paul also knew as they begged and as they pleaded and as they cried and they said, Paul, don't go down to Jerusalem. But Paul, my friend, had a greater tugging. He had a greater and a stronger conviction. He had a stronger drawing and leading to go that was coming from the Lord because God said, Paul, you need to go down to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. There's some things down there that you're going to have to go through. There's some things you're going to have to suffer. There's some hardships that you're going to have to endure when you go to Jerusalem. And why was Paul going to have to go through this? Why was Paul going to have to face this? Because the Lord told him, he said, Paul, you're going to understand uh, what I went through for you. Paul, you're going to see uh, what I went through, what I faced, what I endured uh, on the way to the cross cross of Calvary for you and my friend God was giving Paul just a little glimpse and a taste of the suffering that he saved your face and what he went through you see church there's times in our lives we're going to face suffering we're going to face hardship we're going to have to endure troubles and trials and different obstacles that may be in our way but there's one thing that we can assure, rest assured of this morning is this. We've got one that's been there. We've got one that's went through it. And we've got one that's going to go through it with us again. My friend, we serve a faithful Savior and faithful God this morning. When you begin to read about this and the Apostle Paul and the sufferings, my friend, what an example here. You see, Paul set his face toward Jerusalem just as Christ did. This probably won't be on the screen, but I want to read this to you. It comes from the book of Luke. Luke chapter number 9 this morning. Luke chapter number 9. And the Lord Jesus, as he set his face towards Jerusalem, the apostle Paul also did as well. Starting with verse 15, 51, it said this, And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was that though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. Why? Because he knew his destiny. He knew the mission had to be accomplished. He knew the reason why he even came. The Lord knew exactly why he was born of a virgin. Why our Savior left heaven and he came down and became man, came flesh and walked upon the earth for 33 and a third year. He set his face towards Jerusalem. Why? Because he knew he must face the shame. He must face the ridicule. He must face the mockery. He must face the betrayal. He must face the cross of Calvary. He must face the death. He must face what was there that he had to go through to be able to save you and I, that we may become his children, born again believers in Jesus Christ. Paul had a mission. Even though he knew it was going to be hard, Paul was ready to die for the Lord. He was ready to give his life for the Lord. You know, the Bible talks about martyrs throughout the Word of God and throughout the Bible. 
If you look about in the book of Revelation, chapter number 6, you find verse number 9 through 11. It talks about how those that were under the altar that was there of God, and the Bible said that those, those that are under the altar, the Bible said there that, that they begin to cry, they begin to weep, and they said, For how long, O Lord, until you avenge the blood of those, those enemies of ours? We find of something there that what that tells us is those that have died faithfully for the Word of God, I believe God's got a special place reserved for them in heaven. Because they did something, my friend. They gave the ultimate. They gave the ultimate. They gave their life for the Word of God and the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, I hope and pray today that we can be just as bold, just as faithful, just as selfless as the Apostle Paul was. That not only do we need to cast our cares and our burdens upon the Lord, but when that time comes, we are obedient to the Word of God. We are obedient to go and do what God has saved and called us to do, no matter what lies in front of us. No matter what the suffering may be, no matter what the obstacle, no matter what the challenge, no matter the hardship. Paul knew all those things laid out there in front of him, but yet he still made the choice to go and to be obedient to the Lord. I hope and pray today that we could be obedient to continue to go for the Lord. Church, I hope and pray for us that we continue to live and we continue to have the freedom that we've got right now to continue to share the Word of God and preach and tell a lost people about Jesus. But I hope and pray that if there ever comes a time that that liberty may not be as free and we may not have as much liberty to be able to share and to go and do like we do right now, I hope and pray that each and every one of us sitting here this morning that's been saved by the grace of God I hope there's enough courage and faith and love for our Savior here this morning that we would continue to go no matter what the challenges may be. And I tell you what, I'm thankful this morning that we serve a God that loves us enough. He gave His life for us. You know, the, the only thing we can do is give our life for the Lord. Amen? We can never repay Him for the sin debt. We can never repay him for what he's done for us. We ought to just say, Lord, take my life. Use it for your glory, your honor, your kingdom. Use it to tell people about you and what you can do in their lives. I'm thankful for that. Be that light. Be that witness that God has saved us to be. As we stand to our feet this morning, if they want to come and get a time and offer an uh, invitation hymn, an opportunity for you to come to this altar and pray, I want to say this morning, Every head bowed, eye closed. This morning you're here, and I, I pray that if there is a burden or a weight or a care, whatever it may be that you may be been carrying around for a couple of days or weeks or months or even years, whatever it may be, why don't you come this morning and just give that to the Lord? Lay that down at the foot of the cross today and ask Him just to help you take care of that. Cast your care upon Him because He cares for you today. Maybe you're here this morning and that care, that weight, that burden, that load you've been carrying around, it's been affecting you and you've not been able to be the light and the witness that you need to be for the Lord. Won't you come this morning and ask God to help you, forgive you with that, give you what you need to be able to be that light? and to a lost and dying world this morning. As we sing, we're going to pray, mind the Lord today and be obedient to His Holy Spirit. Father, we thank You for all that You've done this morning and for all that You've done for us, God. Lord, we thank You for Your Word. We pray today, God, that, Lord, You would work in our hearts and work in our lives. We pray, Father, that Your Holy Spirit would speak to each and every one of us here today. 
And God, our prayer is, is that, Father, we would be obedient. That, Lord, we would listen. That we would heed the call, Lord, of your Spirit. Father, if there's someone here that's burdened down, Father, with the cares of this life or... Lord, whatever the, the situation or circumstance may be, I pray this morning that, God, they would just come. And, Lord, cast that upon you, Lord, and lay those burdens at your feet, Father, that, Lord, you can take them and help them and use them, Father, to be the light and witness you'd have them to be. Father, we pray for the boldness. We pray for courage. We pray for strength that, Father, we would be as the Apostle Paul, that, Lord, we would be obedient to you. That, Father, we would be willing to go and do where you call and send us. And, Father, no matter what the, the opposition, no matter what the struggle, no matter what, Lord, may lie in front of us or, Lord, whatever we may have to face, I pray that, God, you would give us that courage and boldness, Father, to continue to be obedient and go. Lord, that not only, Father, as the Apostle Paul said, I'm ready to be bound but also ready to die for the Lord Jesus. Father, what faith. Lord, that he had. Lord, I pray that you would increase our faith, encourage our faith, strengthen us today. And all this we ask, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. As they sing, mind the Lord today. This morning, near to the heart of God. Amen. Does anybody have a testimony or a word? Uh, anything you feel led to say this morning? Amen. 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 Appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate that. There you go. Great testimony. I encourage everybody uh, that can and will. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about We've said this in the last couple of weeks, but uh, Brother Rick and myself, we mentioned it on Wednesday night during our business meeting, but we would love, and our goal for this coming year is we want to see our Sunday school grow. And uh, we want to see more and more and more people come and get involved and be in Sunday school. We have classes, wonderful teachers. Uh, we're working on trying to get a new class started at the first of the year, so you'd be much in prayer for that. So we just encourage everybody that can, please come be a part of our Sunday school. Uh, I believe with all my heart, when we get in Sunday school in, in, a, in a small group time, uh, you, you begin to not only grow in your personal walk and your personal walk in relationship with the Lord Jesus, but you can grow with other brothers and sisters in Christ and believers and fellowship with them. Sunday school is a wonderful opportunity to come. So I encourage everybody, please, make a make note. Get up just a little bit earlier next Sunday morning. Try to come. Be in Sunday school with us. Starts at 10. And then, of course, worship starts at 11. So remember that. All right. Anybody else? Appreciate that. 
Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Appreciate that, Brother Bill. Thank the Lord for that. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Well, we're definitely looking forward to a good time of fellowship and food downstairs here in just a minute. Uh, I want to ask our deacons if they'll come on and get our offering plates ready, and uh, they'll receive the morning offering on our way out. Uh, if you are visiting with us today, we are so thankful and glad to have you. And if you would, please take just a few minutes and fill out uh, the guest card that's in the bulletin. If you'll fill that out, tear it out, and place that in the offering plate on your way out this morning, uh, we'd love to be able to follow up with you. So we do appreciate you, glad and thankful that you come and were with us today. At this time, I want to take just a few minutes and allow some of our older ones uh, at this time to go ahead and make their way downstairs uh, and go ahead and get in line to start eating. So... Uh, at this time, if our older ones would, if they want to go ahead and make their way, uh, those that, uh, uh, that we'd love to give you that opportunity to go right ahead. So at this time, if you want to go ahead, uh, don't forget Wednesday night. Uh, we'll be back at 7 o'clock, and uh, we'll have our uh, Sunday, we'll have our teachers for, our, sorry, our classes for our young people uh, downstairs, our youth and our children. So we encourage you that all that can and will come be a part of that. Uh, also, we'll have prayer meeting and Bible study, so uh, remember that as well. All righty. No one else has anything. We'll have time of prayer, and we're going to pray also not only for dismissal, but we're also going to pray uh, for our food. Uh, so uh, remember, remember that, and everybody just encourage you all to stay and enjoy the time today. All righty, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for the opportunity. That God you give us to come and be in your house Father we are so thankful and blessed Father for our church and our church family God we love and we thank you for each and every one God thank you for this church and God for the vision and for the calling and for the desire and Lord the the heart that this church has Father for missions that Lord they want to see lost people saved Father I thank you for that and we pray that God you would continue to help us to do our part to reach out to this community, that, Lord, we could lead somebody to you and tell them about you, Father, that they would have the opportunity to be saved. God, we're just so thankful. We pray that you'd bless the food that, Lord, we're about to receive. Please, Lord, let it be a nourishment to our body, that, God, it would strengthen us and nourish us, that, God, we can go and do what you called us to do. We pray you bless all the hands that, Father, have prepared and that, Lord, have had a part in this. We love you and we thank you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen.